The weakness in the real estate market in Dubai reflected in your numbers. When is this market going to strengthen again? Uh, good morning, Yusuf. Thank you for having me. Um, Yusuf, look, um, Dubai real estate market, like any real estate market, tends to be a little cyclical in its nature. Uh, we've come off a strong cycle, and for the last two years, cycle has weakened. Um, I think the longer uh, we, we go through a weaker cycle, the closer we get to a, a, a recovery in the market. As to when is that going to happen, that's really very, very hard to predict. However, there are a number of indicators on the, on the horizon that suggest there may be some positive news at the end of the tunnel. For example, this region is always long on oil. Um, oil prices uh, have done well, relatively well, over the last few weeks. If that persists, then we're likely to see some impact uh, on the real estate market. Although not too far from there, will be built up to the 2020 Expo, which will bring Dubai back to the focus and attention, and as a result, is likely to create some sense of urgency to participate in the market. Adela, very good morning to you. It's, it's Manus alongside Yusuf here. Uh, good, good to talk to you. Is it the case that we need to see some kind of restriction on supply I think look you can you can you can you can think about putting restrictions on supply but but this is a this is an open and free market and that what makes it so attractive um, the, so long as there is sufficient return to the risk capital there will be capital deployed to exploit the opportunity but I think um, they will get a stage where, where, where it's no longer attractive for fresh capital to come into this, and, and then you'll begin to see a turn. Now, um, in my view, um, um, having a difficult market is not always bad news because it creates opportunities, um, and, and you've got to sit on sufficient liquidity to time those opportunities. Also, the bigger players, usually historically in other markets, and in this one, see this as a breakaway opportunity from the pack when it's attractive for everybody to come in and participate, you get a lot of developers, new developers mushrooming in. So it's not all bad news. Adrian, in the past you've said that you may repay some debt early. What's the latest on that front and also how does that fit into your broader financing plans for the year? Any bonds on the horizon? Well, we, we um, the post our Q1 results, uh, yes, if we went out to the market, to, to the Cook market, and we successfully uh, closed the transaction of $400 million, which we were very pleased with. We paid back uh, 180 of the 2019, and this is a, a reflection of our proactive um, approach to managing liability. The 650 was maturing in April 2019. We had taken some of it out in 2017 and some of, some more of it in 2018, and the outstanding is 270. Now we're, we're at the peak of our liability base. From here to the end of the year, we're looking at paying down some debt, such that uh, we're likely to finish up flat on, on the opening position. Adil, one of the things, one of the set of numbers that I looked at in, in your release was the margin compression that we've seen relative to last year going into the third quarter. So we're now down at, what, 40, just over 40 percent for you in margins. Every investor is going to want to know whether that margin compression is done. Are we at the lowest level? Do you think that we're putting in a base in terms of your margins at 40.2 percent? Is this the nadir? Okay. Look, I think I think it's very relevant to ask that uh, because margin is a, is a key driver of uh, shareholder value. Um, if if you look, well, we've actually there are two considerations that you got to take uh, keep in mind. One is that you are probably at the, at the, at the if not the lowest uh, lowest uh, of the cycle, you're at the you're at the um, very very close to that point, the lowest point in the cycle. And therefore, for same same set of variables, you're likely to sell more and sell at higher prices if you were at a different point in the cycle. And that's pure uh, addition to margin. For your for your costs, really, don't don't change significantly at different points in the cycle. Some selling costs go up when the cycle is weaker, but that's about it. Um, and the other point that you need to bear in mind is that we actually. There was further clarification on the IFRS um, with regards to how we treated our villa sales and how we recognize land revenue. So we've moved 
um, not change the accounting policy, but rather change the treatment of the same account policy. Um, and as a result, we do not recognize the land value on, on, on inception of sales as we used to. And that, as a result, would optically bring the mark, m- margin down, but over the life cycle of product recognition, that's not going to matter. So it's a long-winded way of saying, yeah. if you were to take a strategic view of the of the of the cycle, then that of the sorry of the margin, then that would be around about 45, 47 percent gross right. margin uh, from, from the 40s that, that we see this quarter. Either we only met, earlier mentioned the pain that some of these developers have gone through. I mean, you look at Emar Properties lost a quarter of its market capitalization so far this year. Your stock is down 30 percent year to date. And it just underscores some of the anxiety that is present. What about diversifying and pushing more into some of your other markets? I mean, you have some projects that you've worked with in the Trump, with the Trump organization in the past. Are there any new markets on the horizon? Is it time to beef up the expansion plans outside? Uh, I think, I think yes, that's, uh, I mean, in my view, in our game, diversification is overplayed. Dubai remains a very strong market. It, it continues to give us sizable volumes. I mean, despite the drop in volume, we've actually sold 1.6 billion dirhams worth of property in one city in one quarter. So that's not to be sneezed at. At a margin of 40% margin, it's still hard to find cities in which a Middle Eastern developers can develop comfortably, uh, given distance and culture barriers, et cetera, that will give you the volumes and the margins that Dubai does. And it is right under our noses uh, in a market we understand uh, and operate well and have got, have got a track record, for, long track record for deliveries. So I think, I think the key is to be able to withstand the cycle and, and exploit opportunities as they present themselves. And I'm okay. sure they will, especially in terms of land buying.